It's like King David said so many centuries ago, I was glad when they said unto me, let's, let us go into the house of the Lord. Please join me in our call to worship this morning. When we try to hide, God always finds us. When we crawl into the darkness, even there we won't escape God's eyes. When you're tired of running from the one who loves you, we are here at last, ready and eager to be made whole. O Lord, you are the potter, we are the clay. Take our lives, O God, and make us so anew. Pour out your Spirit upon us that we may be filled with living water. Fit us for your purposes that we may be wholly yours. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our opening hymn. 2152, Change My Heart, O God. Thank you. 
himself. You have to believe that he is real, that he is, he will give you, give you or help you what you need or want. So just keep on praying and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Missy. Well, now it's time for our greetings and announcements. Um, let's stand and greet one another. And, uh, committee meeting on September 12th and that's going to be for, well, finalizing preparations for the September 25th church anniversary worship. Tree planting, ribbon cutting ceremony and luncheon. Also planning for our chili and soup supper on November 4th. And uh, we are uh, enjoying our new, enjoying our new uh, series and our Bible studies on Tuesday nights at uh, 6 30. You're welcome to come anytime and join us. And it's uh, a new series called uh, On the Book Six of the Minor Prophets in the Old Testament. And it's entitled Be Amazed by Warren Wearsby. And uh, that we got a guest night selling supper for the women at the West Branch United Women and Faith. Inviting us to a salad supper on Monday, September 12th at 6 p.m. It'll be held at the West Branch United Methodist Church, 203 North Downey, West Branch, Iowa, at 6 p.m. They would like you to RSVP by September 5th. Uh, take the number 319-643-58, whoops, 5489, 319-643-58. Five eight. Here we go again. <laughs> Five four eight nine. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh. Okay. And um, we have an uh, announcement about handicap equipment. Pay attention to that. And uh, you can always sign up for worship stewards, or or uh, if we remember, we'll we'll come and ask you. <laughs> And uh, there's still a job opening available for someone you know would like to be interested in becoming a clerk of Clear Creek Township, overseeing the uh, Tippin Cemetery. And uh, please contact Josie Walker, 319-331-3525, or Doug Campbell at 319-331-4581. And this is a paid position that averages about four hours a month. And they're also uh, needing one more trustee volunteer. <coughs> and then uh, about that, about our uh, September 25th meeting, you've got the insert in here. Be sure to get the word out. And, uh, and this is going to be a big, big, big happening here. And, uh, the next big thing. So, is there any, uh, the pastor will be praying for later in a, in a few moments and uh, about those that are in our homebound care centers and prayers and praises there. We, uh, Betty Madden, she uh, just recently turned 98. Now, Betty's at uh, Crestview Care Center in West Branch. 
and she's come down with pneumonia, and, and I think she's got COVID too on top of it. Uh, so, the, uh, but, it, uh, uh, Johnny just said she's as spicy as ever, <laughs> and uh, he always knew what, uh, where Betty stood on issues and things. <laughs> she lets you know. Oh. Is there any other uh, uh, announcements or prayer requests? Uh, if not, yeah. Well, yes. I have a joy. Greg and Monty are both home recuperating, which is wonderful. Uh, Greg will be going back to Windmill Manor uh, for outpatient rehab, <clears throat> which uh, is going to be very helpful for us. It's a slow process, but they're both doing well. And what's their first names again? Monty, M-O-N-T-E, and Greg, my husband and my son. Monty and? Greg. Okay. And since you're all so good at praying, we'll add one more. <laughs> my, our brother-in-law fell on Friday, 82 years old, and broke his hip and his wrist. He's had surgery. He's doing okay, but... And his name is Dennis. Dennis? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. If, if no more, then... Uh, We've got a 150-year trivia update by Janet Berry. Good morning. At the Special Church Conference for Tip and Grace UMC on October 6, 2013, Steve Beckler stated that the city of Tippin would offer Grace UMC approximately 702000 to buy the land assessment on the east side of the church property. However, this figure had not yet been finalized by, by the City of Tippins acting attorneys and the City Council. A motion was made by Steve Beckler and seconded by Rich Seward to accept the offer of approximately 702000 when finalized by the City of Tippins. The 48 members present voted unanimous, unanimously in favor of the motion with no nays and no abstentions. When the dollar amount is officially finalized by the City of Tiffin, the District Building and Location Committee will review and accept the offer by Tiffin, the City of Tiffin. Thank you. <clears throat> and I know we've had it in the bulletin and we've been talking about our event coming up on the 25th, so I'm just putting another word in for that. Um, I have been working on a memory book. It won't be ready at that time, but soon I will be putting out um, a sign-up sheet if you're interested and want to be contacted to purchase one. Because probably one of the big decisions will be how many to print, so to you know ensure that you can get one you know from that printing line you'll want to sign up, so thank you. Will there be a sign up shirt available? Oh, yeah. It's our, it's out on the uh, No, it's not yet. It's soon. It will be here real soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, it's time for our offering. Now, would the ushers please come forward, please?
At this time, uh, please uh, join me in, offer, in our offering prayer in, in unison. Loving Father, you are ever mindful of your people. You fashion us in the vessel fit for your service, and you transform our gifts and our offerings into the vessels you serve your world well. You are worthy of our praise and the glory. Scripture reading now by Don McConnell. <clears throat> Please rise for the reading of the word. Today's reading is Jeremiah 18, 1 through 11, at the potter's house. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house and I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do this with you, Israel, as the potter does? declared the Lord, like clay in the hands of the potter, so you are in my hands, Israel. At any time I announce that a nation or kingdom can be uprooted, torn down, or destroyed. And if that nation, I warned, repents of evil, then I will relent and not inflict on, that, on them the disaster I have planned. After another time, I announced that nations and kingdoms is to be built up and plan, planted. And if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good things I have intended to do for it. Now, therefore, say the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says. Look. I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each of you, and reform your ways and your actions. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Our gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 25. 33. The costs of being a disciple. Great crowds were following Jesus. He turned around and said to them, If you want to be my follower, you must love me more than your own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters. Yes, more than your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And you cannot be my disciple if you do not carry your own cross and follow me. But don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first getting estimates and then checking to see if there is enough money to pay the bills? Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of funds. And then, how everyone would laugh at you. Then they would say, there's the person who started that building and ran out of money before it was finished. Or what king would ever dream of going to war without first sitting down his counselors and discussing whether his army or 10,000 is strong enough to defeat the 20,000 soldiers who are marching against him. If he is not able, then while the enemy is still far away, he will send a delegation to discuss terms of peace. So no one can become my disciple without giving up everything for me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A blessed Sunday, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. 
There were times in my life when I hear my friends, especially my mentors, telling me that, Ruby, it is not easy to be a Christian. It is not easy to be a pastor, especially that you're a woman. It's not easy to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And indeed, I agree with them. It is not easy to walk the life of a Christian, right? Do you agree with me? Yes. Why? Why is it not easy? Why is it difficult to become a Christian? I tell you why. Because there are a lot of temptations that come in our way. And there are a lot of things that we need to give up. And there are a lot of things that God demands from us. As we commit our life, as we commit to be one of His disciples. It's not easy to become a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus, in our text today, was followed by multitudes of people, and they had their own reason for following him. And even if all of us, or the multitudes at the time, there were a lot of people, even there were a lot of people, Jesus knew the reason why these people were there following him. This, Jesus knew the very reason why they were there. And so he issues this condition to them. If you want to follow me and if you want to become my disciples, number one, hate your family. Number two, carry your cross. Wow. That's the tough one. Tough. Those two are tough. Now, for you, my dear brother and sister in the Lord, what is your reason for following Jesus? Is it so that you will find blessings, prosperity? Is it so that you will find peace, find contentment, <coughs> healing, to find meaning for your life? Remember what Jesus said? If you want to follow me, be my disciple, hate your family, and carry your cross. Now, what is your reason for following Jesus? I know that each of us has our own reason for following Jesus. I have my reason too for following Jesus. And one of our reasons for following Jesus is if we are his disciples and if we follow him, we are assured that our soul will be with him, with Jesus when we die. Amen? Amen. In Mark chapter 8, verses 34 to 37, we read, And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? We don't want to forfeit our soul, right? Amen? Amen. Amen. In this text, we see that Jesus is telling those who wish to follow him to deny themselves and carry their cross so that they will not forfeit their soul. Now, in the text that we have today that, that I have read from the Gospel of Luke, Jesus tells the people, Jesus tells the crowd, hate your family. That is really tough. Now, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, is Jesus really telling those crowds and us today that we should hate our parent, parents, hate our sister, hate our brother, hate our children so that we can follow Jesus? What do you think? If Jesus is telling us to hate our family, then why did God give the fifth commandment? What's the fifth commandment? Honor your father and your mother, right? The book of Proverbs tells us, children, listen to your parents. In Ephesians chapter 6, we read, Honor your parents and so that you will have a long life. This contradicts, right? <laughs> they are contradicting each other. Is Jesus really telling us to hate our parents, our children? Commentary 
are saying that this word hate from the text that I have read goes back to an Aramaic word meaning to love less. So if we change the wordings and put the original meaning, it would read, If anyone comes to me and does not love less his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Do you remember the message that we have last Sunday? It was about Jeremiah, right? And Jesus and Jeremiah was reminding the northern, the southern uh, kingdom, the kingdom of Judah, to put down their idols, to let go of their idols and worship God alone, first and foremost. Now, in our text today, Jesus said, Hate your family if you want to follow me and carry your cross. He said this because he meant that he was demanding a primary and undivided allegiance of those who commit to follow him. He doesn't want the second place in our life. He doesn't want the second place in the lives of those people who were there listening to him. He wants the first and foremost place the first priority, Jesus was not despising family ties. And Jesus loved his mother. Do you remember on the cross when he said, Mother, here is your son. Son, yes, here is your mother. He gave his mother into a care of another beloved disciples because he loved his mother so much. What Jesus wanted to say when he said, what was in our text was, if you love your family and your life more than me, then you are not fit to be my disciples. <laughs> if you love someone more than me, you are not fit to be my disciple. Now the question for us, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, do you fit on that description? Of who a disciple is that Jesus is calling in our text today? You alone can answer that. I don't know how much commitment you have to the Lord, but right now our text tells us that Jesus wants our undivided allegiance if we say we want to follow him and become his disciple. Now bless your family. They should be your priority next to me. That's what Jesus is saying to you and me today. Another condition that Jesus is pointing out to the people is carry your cross. Get your family and number two, carry your cross. Before Jesus' crucifixion, the cross was a symbol of a curse. And after Jesus' crucifixion, it was a symbol of God's love towards mankind. Jesus saying this to the multitudes following him meant that they must crucify their worldly desires when these desires clash with the demand of Christ. Furthermore, Jesus was telling them to accept crucifixion at the hands of the world. <clears throat> Historians tell us that when the Gospels were written, the early church was under persecution. They lost not just their possessions, not just their money, but even their very lives. The disciples that followed Jesus lost a lot, even their lives. So, if we, if you, if I am become a follower of Jesus, the challenge, carry your cross. And I see a stark difference when we come to church or when we invite people to church. We say, if you join the church, if you follow Jesus, you will find peace, joy, and prosperity. Of course, yes, those are the things that we find. But then, let's not skip the part that when we, when you surrender your life to Jesus and when you accept Him as your Lord and Savior, you have to carry your cross. There are things that you need to give up. So that we can glorify God in our life. 
Amen? There are things that I need to give up so that I can glorify God more in my life. So I think this is where we fail. We often focus too much on the grace. We don't deny the grace of God. God's grace is always there. But what about that which is demanded of you and me as disciples, as followers of Jesus? What about our part as his followers? For this very reason, Jesus goes to say the parable of the tower builder and the king preparing for war. When one builds, he must know the cost of the building. If one goes to war, one must know what to prepare for. So Jesus in our text today calls the hearers, this is what you should prepare if you want to be a disciple, if you want to follow me. Count the costs. Are you willing to pay the costs of following me? And God is speaking to you and me today, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. God knows us. God knows what your situation is. God knows what are the things that He want you to give up so that you can glorify God in your life. There is always a cost when we decide to do something. Amen? Amen. There is always a cost. Are you ready to give whatever that costs so that you can follow Jesus? As your pastor, it is always a struggle for me, especially, that we are, we are in a culture and a lot of people expect us that we should always be considerate and we should not be offending anybody or anyone. We want everyone to be pleased. I want everyone to be pleased. But then, this text reminds me as your pastor that whatever I do or say, someone or somebody will be offended. Especially when we talk about our beliefs as Christians. Especially when we say what we believe that is from the Bible, not everyone will agree to what I say as based on the Bible or to what the Bible says. Not everyone will agree. Even our reading of what the Bible says, not everyone will agree. If we go back to the time of disciples, they, they were offending a lot of people because of the gospel that they were preaching. A lot of people wanted to kill them. A lot of people persecuted these disciples because of what they preach, because of their belief in Jesus. They were persecuted, attacked, disliked, and punished, and many were killed for their belief. So, our text today reminds us that none of us can be Jesus' disciple when we don't want to carry our cross. When we don't want to give up that something that we know that will glorify God, when we don't want to do that something that we know that we should do to glorify God. Now, again, let me remind you that these are not my words. These are Jesus' words. In our text it says, Give up whatever is there that you haven't given up to the Lord. Give it up and put God first before that. So the question for us, for me and you, what is your cross that Jesus wants you to carry? What is the cross that Jesus wants you to carry? In answering this question, I am reminded of one of the sermon of our president in our seminary. And on his sermon, he was talking about carrying one's cross. Carry your cross. And he said, and in, in, in his illustration, he said, I have to carry my cross. And he said, yes, indeed, I need to carry my wife. <laughs> Our president was a pastor. And during, <laughs> during at the time, uh, well, his wife was a, a, a professor in the seminary too. And at the service, his wife was there. And when he said that, I need to carry my wife, he 
he was just smiling and beaming. <laughs> and we couldn't help ourselves. <laughs> what was his reaction? She was just smiling too. <laughs> Is your wife your cross? Is your husband your cross? Who is that somebody that is your cross in the family? It can be a person, it can be a relationship, it can be a situation. I don't know what's your cross that you need to carry so that you can glorify God in your life. We have different crosses that we carry. Let us carry it and serve God. Stay committed to God. Let us carry our cross to glorify God. For carrying our cross means denying ourselves of worldly and fleshly desires to glorify God. It is doing that something that we should do so that we can glorify, we can follow the command of God to serve Him. Give up the things that is not giving glory to God. Now, are there followers of Jesus here? I don't hear an amen. <laughs> Yes, see not in your hands. <laughs> Are there followers of Jesus in this congregation? Yes. The cause for us is put God first and carry our cross. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and seek to grow in his likeness. Let us draw near with faith, make our humble confession, and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. We do not presume to turn this for table, we're first for Lord. Trust me in our goodness.
Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the table is ready to all who wish to partake of our holy communion. Please come forward to receive. Shall we all pray together a prayer of thanksgiving? Most bountiful God, we give you thanks for the world you have created, for the gift of life and for giving yourself to us in Jesus Christ, whose only life, suffering, and death, and glorious resurrection have delivered us from slavery to sin and death. We thank you that in the power of your Holy Spirit, you have fed us in the sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. We are your children, and yours is the glory, now and forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
bow down our heads in prayer. Our gracious and loving Father, have thine own way in our life. And we thank you for the time that we have spent in this sanctuary to worship you. Lord God, we honor and glorify your name in our midst today. For we know that we are here, we gather here because we love you, we want to glorify you, and we need your blessings in our life. Lord God, each and every one of us has a definite and particular need. And we know that you didn't promise us that life would be easy, but you did promise us that we will never be alone. You did promise us that you will be with us as we carry our cross and follow you. Your grace is sufficient for each and every one of us. Your grace is sufficient for our life. Lord God, we pray, I pray for those that are struggling with family relationship, difficulties that are heartbreaking, and for those who are struggling with physical sickness and diseases. Lord, we ask our Jehovah Rapha that you would just reach out unto them. You know just how to minister the word of hope that they need to hear. And so we ask that you would just let your word come for them. That you would just let your presence comfort, comfort those who are struggling physically, especially. <clears throat> in our congregation and lord you have heard our prayers you have answered our prayers and lord you have heard our thanksgiving thank you for being a faithful to god to us as we leave this sanctuary Lord god cover us all with your precious blood and fill us with your grace thank you so much for well, this is our prayer in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ Brothers and sisters, join me in the benediction. The one who shaped us in our mother's wombs loves us and shapes us still. God is the Father, we are the clay. The one who formed our inward parts continues to create us anew each and every day. God is the Father, we are the clay. The one who molds us in God's image fashions us for glory. God is the Father, we are the clay. Go with God's blessings. <laughs>